I've been using Obsidian and Morgan for over three years now, and before that I was using Notion for about three, almost four years. Xtiles reached out to me to have a look at their app, and when I look at other apps, what I'm doing is looking for features I want to take or try and implement in the tools that I'm currently using, and Xtiles has a lot of them, so let's have a look. To start with, this is a desktop app. It is on the browser as well, and it's not local based. So this is more like Notion than Obsidian. In the left sidebar, you can see we've got the recent pages. They're not quite pages because these are projects which have pages inside. So if you're Obsidian familiar, it's not like a file, it's more like a folder. And if you're Notion familiar, it's more like a workspace than a page. Because Xtiles is like Notion, it's shared, it's collaborative, there are shared pages or projects as well alongside favorites. But then we have the spaces. And because, as mentioned, this is a collaborative tool, you can add individuals to it. So invite members via email. If we go into, let's have a look at the team project, we can see now we get to this project view, this tiles view. I will go into more detail in all of this in a second, but what this lets me do is share this project with anyone else, very similar to Notion. So if you do want to have a team project space, you can do. And then if we go back to the home, you can see in the sidebar, we then have personal spaces. So again, this is very similar to a Notion style layout. But when we come to my workspace, this is my workspace with three different projects in. And these are the sorts of features that I would like to try and implement into Obsidian. Quickly browsing around, we have templates. So if I want to add a template for a project, I can. Archive projects are there. If we go to the all section, you'll see plus new project. So we add the new project, start from scratch. Import from Markdown, so Obsidian users, yes, you can import from Markdown and then use template. And I've had a look through quite a few of these templates. There's lots, as you can see, brainstorming and onboarding and task management, but they all essentially do the same sorts of things. I personally would click start from scratch, but this for me is where I use QuickAd in Obsidian. So this is replicating the QuickAd setup I have it does it automatically. You don't need to know the code and how to format the plugins to do that. Taking a look at the consulting project example template, so you can see this is currently shared with another person and this is what's been brought in. I've got the tabs at the top and then I've got all of the tiles here, which gives me key deliverables, the objectives, estimates, documents, etc. so information. But on top of this project overview information, we've got we've got tasks and tasks are in a database very similar to Notion. As you've seen, we've got done to do in progress. And these are tasks that we can get done. We then have a research tab, which at the moment is separated for market. So market research, but you can add any other tabs in here because this is a group. So research group, so we can create a page. We've got market and add something else. So maybe some sales research. And as we move along, we've got workshops, which as you can see has strategy meeting, coaching sessions and kickoff workshops. So this is more pages pages in the workshop group and then inside of the client documents group we again have more than one page and the reason this can be really useful is as I mentioned at the start this is shareable so I have this shared with another person so you can have an entire team with all of your notes the tasks the research the workshop the clients documents everything can be collaborative inside of tiles very similar to notion but then one of the other templates for those of you that are familiar with the channel probably have heard of Tiago Forte and second brain building a second brain and the para method and this template does exactly what you would expect it gives you information to start with. So you don't have to create the folders. You don't have to create the databases. This template gives it to you straight away. You've got the project. So if we click on the project link, you can see it's taken us to the projects section, which is inside of this group. So we've got the parent method group, and this is the project page. We've got the areas page, resources page, and archive page. If we go back to this dashboard, you can see there's the pages and they are linked. So I can click on the areas links and it will now take me to all of the areas. Then if I click on work, now I'm in the work page. See, there's the properties of the resources page and it's the same for resources archive. We then have the my current project. So these are tasks in launch new website. And when I click into this, you can see, okay, launch new website status is planned. Date is 25th of May, 24, high priority. And these are the tasks that want to get done. You can see we can add dates on them. But in the right hand side, which is similar or more similar to Obsidian than I think Notion, is we've got the backlinks. We have a backlink to the dashboard because it's linked inside of the dashboard. But you can see inside of the projects view, launch new website is right here. So this is the, the page. It's got the properties that you would be familiar with from Notion or Obsidian. So the page information is in the database. We've got the Kanban view, we've got the calendar view, and then we also have a priority table view. So you can see there's launch new website, but we can also see it in a tile 
in the dashboard and there's the task. You can fold it uh, into whatever you want. And in a very similar way, you can see personal tasks. So these are the personal tasks we want to get done. This is the person that I have shared inside of this page. So you could have a second brain for the work, for the job, for whatever you're working is. There's like a professional second brain that's shared or sharing with other researchers that you're doing a project with, or it could be private and only you have access to it. Then we also actually have a habit tracker and yearly goals, which there are links at the bottom, but I probably would just use the tab. So when we go to yearly goals, again, just tiles as you would expect. And then the habit tracker has tiles, but then has a table inside of these tiles, which gives you the, the tickable boxes where you can say, yes, I've done this or no, I haven't done this to give you a nice overview of all of the things that you've done or haven't done uh, in my case. You can see in the middle here, we've got yearly planner template. If I click into that, we go to another tiles view. And for those of you that do like the aesthetic of Notion and don't like the aesthetic of a, an obsidian canvas, you can see here, <laughs> there's a lot of focus on the aesthetics. So for quick navigation, we've got the home button, we've got these spaces for workspaces navigation, you've got an icon, you've got the name of the file, you can add a cover if you want to, I'm not too fussed about all that stuff. But then we have tabs very similar to Notion and Obsidian, both have tabs with different pieces of information. These are essentially canvases or mind maps that you would see, that's all of what tiles is. And each of these is just a blank tile. And as you can see, when you click in, you can add some text. If I come back to the results of the year, I can come in here, I can write some important words, and then I can add things to a list, I can add an image, all the things you would expect to see in a word editor. And similar to Notion, you can use the backspace or inside of Obsidian, use the slash commands core plugin to bring up the list of things you can do. You can add a task, a note, which is like a page, bookmark, so a link, an embed, which is like a normal embed or an iframe, images, then all of your basic text that you would normally expect in a word editor, alongside the media embeds, the different list types, and then some aesthetic styles, which in Obsidian would be the callouts in Notion. I believe it's also called a callout, but it's called out block, not a callout markdown code block. So we've got a red banner here, which is basically a callout. However, as you can see, this callout has an expand. So when you expand the, I guess, Block, you can now add more. So I'm adding information inside of this red banner. So now when I click out, this red banner callout has information in it. So I can click it and it acts like a page, but it's not a page. Because when I expand it, I've expanded it as a page, but as you can see, it's a page full of more tiles. So I can double click, add another simple note, image, task, table. Let's just add a simple note. So I'm adding more information into a separate tile from the red banner. And if you have a look at the tab, you see we've got our navigation. We've got the results of the year, which is the page we started on, then the red banner banner block inside of a page. So we come back to the results. There is the banner, which is also a clickable page, which takes us into another tile. So it's like a, a canvas inside of a canvas inside of a canvas. Moving over to a different tab, we've got goals for the year. And as you can see to the side, you can drag these up and down. So it's, it's draggable, it's droppable, those sorts of things as you would expect. You've got plus buttons to add new tiles because this is a tile on a canvas. And as you can see, you can adjust the tiles very, very well. There is lots of flexibility to create whatever canvas view you want to see. And by clicking on the tile style, you can change the icon, change the title, change the style, change the color. So unlike an obsidian, you don't need to put markdown or CSS code to make it look different. And unlike Notion, you actually have a canvas, a mind map in the tool. That, that's what the tool is focused on. But now I'm going to switch to a different project. So let's go to the tech channel project that I created. And this is completely from scratch. So this is all me making stuff. And you can see I've got a different tile, orange, of course. And this is a link, which when I click to the X tiles video, it takes me to this page, which you would probably see. Oh, wait, look, there's properties. So there's databases inside of this as well, or what we would call databases. I come up to this Kanban, you see this is actually a group. So there are grouped tags, which to my knowledge, Obsidian and Notion don't have. So there's grouped tabs. And when you see the icon, the icon is a diamond. And that's because it's a, it's called a collection, but it's like a database similar to Tana. They call them collections, but it's basically a database. But when I click on Kanban board, it shows me a Kanban board view of this database. You can see there's another board here, board urgency. And just like all of the other database tools, 
there are different views of the database. So this is a calendar view. And when you click on plus to add a view, there's a gallery, there's a board view, and you can choose the grouping by whatever property that's in it, just like Notion. You've got the table, which is a normal table. Then you have a calendar, which you click, and then you choose the date. You've got the Notion database flexibility alongside other page linking, but the backlinks are more similar to Obsidian. Now, for those unfamiliar, this may get confusing, but we have a lock. I don't really know what the correct terminology is here, but we have make a new video. It's a page inside of this database, inside of this collection. When I click it, I can add to a different collection. So at the moment it's in the Kanban board. I can add it to the Eisenhower matrix and the database collection. So in Notion, I wouldn't be able to do this because they are different databases. But in Tiles, I can. So inside of Obsidian, it will be a file that you search for in a query. And in Tiles, it's similar. It's a file page block that you can put in various queries. So it's a collection rather than a, a database of specific files. Hopefully that makes sense. So now when I go to the database collection, you can see make new video is here. And if we have a look at the top, we've got the arrows for backlinks. And when I click on that, it says, hey, look, this is also linked to Kanban board. If I come into here, let's add a property. Let's say a text property, create new text. I've now added a text property that says new text in make a new video, but that was made inside of the database collection. When we go to the Kanban board, we've now got make a new video, we come in, you can see this is a different collection. So it shows different properties because these properties are for this collection. I'm gonna go back to database collection and then come into here. These properties are this collection. So one page file block has different variations of the properties you can have. And just to emphasize that point, you can see here we've got make a new video. That is the page that we're working with. And these are the two properties. When we go to the Kanban board and go to the table view, there's the make a new video and there are the properties. So let's make the status in progress. Now, if we go to Kanban board, it will be in progress, but go to the database collection and you can see that information isn't being shown here, but it's still the same tile. Because if I'm writing important information in make a new video and then go back to Kanban, there is the information in there. So it's, it's linked. And in a similar sense, any task that we make, so let's make one in here. Unless I've missed an update in Notion, you can add a task in tiles, which you can't do in Notion. So add a due date, you can add a reminder, and you can also <laughs> make it repeated. It says on the plus pad, but you can make a repeated task. So this task in new video is for the 15th of May. And now when I come up to the top and I click on the tasks, I can see there's an overdue task, one that I made yesterday. And these are all of the other tasks. So task in new video, when I click it, it shows who it's assigned to. So if you are sharing it, you can assign to different people. There's the due date. Click on the three dots, expand. You can then add more information. And this is where you just go further and further and further with the information you want to add to tasks. And for those vigilant, you'll have also seen it's got a backlink. It's got a link to where the task was. So you can click on there and it will take you back to where the task is. So if we go back to the tasks, another task that's in the past. This was in the meeting notes, which is right here. If I tick it off, say it's done. Now I go to the tasks, it's completed. And something else with the tasks I find really interesting is the tasks, as you can see here, show in the database collection view alongside the pages. So if I go to the table, you can see we've got card one, two, three, the test title, make, and then the new page. So this new page is what I've just shown you here inside of the calendar. It's got a date associated with it. So created time and then there's the date so 14th of May if I change that to the 16th now going to move on the calendar view to the new page but the task in new video shows on the calendar with the pages I've just quickly added a few things so we've got publish date with the actual page is the 24th script record edit and schedule all have their own dates so when I'm looking at the calendar I can see okay scripting video recording video schedule video edit video and that is where the video actually goes live that's new page which if I put in brackets is the video so I can see on the calendar when all the individual tasks go and then have a published date, which I think is an interesting use case. For those of you familiar with my Obsidian setup, I actually use a canvas, oftentimes a dashboard or homepage to navigate through my Obsidian files. And this Tiles app does most of what I've tried to do. And it's given me some ideas about how to format, how to create and what queries they actually want to use. But also I would like to see grouped tabs or some sort of version of that that tabbing maybe in a workspace. So I'm gonna experiment that in Obsidian. I don't know how that would work in Notion because I think you'd need to have a Miro embed, which that's just a whole workaround sort of thing. But there is still a lot more features in Xtiles for you to explore. So have a look at the link in the description to explore and see how it may work for you or some ideas you may get for your own setups in your own 